In a previous video, I made the case that the bear market was over and I thought I made a strong case, but a lot of people were saying that I was wrong and that the bear market was not over. So I was like, hmm, you know what? Maybe they're right. So why don't I make a second video exploring their arguments and that way we'll have the strongest case for and against the bear market being over so you can watch both videos and decide for yourself which side is more convincing. So without further ado, I present you with my four part case as to why the bear market is not over. Starting with part one, there's no new money coming in. Check this out. This is the chart of VC funding in the crypto space. The amount invested in August is at two and a half year lows. And that is surefire proof that money is not flowing into the crypto space. I don't really blame them though. Crypto is in a deep bear market right now. And meanwhile, the new kid on the block, AI, is super hot. So all the VCs are going there instead. Even Paradigm, one of the most respected VCs in the crypto space, removed mentions of crypto on their website to show love to AI before people called them out and they backtracked. Anyways, it's not just the VCs. Retail investors are also tightening their purse strings. For proof, just look at this chart, which shows the total stablecoin market cap steadily decreasing since the middle of 2022. That means people are converting their stablecoins for USD and opting to keep their money in traditional finance instead. Because if they wanted to keep it in crypto to invest or do DeFi stuff, then they have to hold on to their stable coins. So that chart is super important to keep an eye on because until it reverses, there won't be a new bull market. Honestly, this should not come as a surprise to anyone because interest and activity are low across the board. Check this out. Here's a graph of the active developers in crypto. It's going down and to the right. Here's a graph of active addresses also down and to the right. And here's social media activity, also trending down since its high point in 2021. So yeah, the bear market is clearly not over until these trends change. And if you ask me, they look like they have a little bit more to drop before they're ready to reverse. But do you know why these charts and metrics are looking so bleak? Well, one reason is because of part two of my case, the fact that regulators are still attacking the crypto industry. In the US, the SEC is still on a war path, even though they had a partial loss against Ripple and a unanimous loss against Grayscale. It seems like Gary Gensler does not care at all. And he's full steam ahead with his goal of killing the crypto industry. They are still suing Coinbase and Binance after all. And they even recently sued a company for their NFT collection, a first when it comes to enforcement actions. So it looks like Gensler still has the green light from the powers that be, and he's not gonna give up that easily, even after a few losses. But also, remember the whole Operation Choke Point 2.0 ordeal that everyone was talking about? That's the theory that the Biden administration is trying to choke out the crypto industry by removing their access to banks. Well, that's still going on. Nothing has changed there. And unfortunately, nothing will change until Congress passes new regulations. They're trying to do that, by the way. And there's even some promising bipartisan bills being considered. But it's looking like an uphill battle as long as Joe Biden is in office. Because Elizabeth Warren, who really controls the economic policy for the Dems, hates crypto. Now, some of y'all may be thinking, well, what about the upcoming Bitcoin ETFs? That's surely something to be bullish about right? Well, not so fast, because even the ETF is not a sure thing. Even though the SEC lost the Grayscale case and the court vacated their prior decision to deny Grayscale's ETF, the SEC still decided to delay all open ETF applications by another 45 days. That made the crypto markets retrace the entire pump caused by Grayscale's victory. And honestly, I don't blame the markets for feeling uncertain about this because Gary Gensler could potentially decide to go scorched earth and deny them for another reason altogether. So yeah, the state of regulations is still super hostile and uncertain for the crypto industry and that's bound to keep the bear market around for longer. But here's the thing, even if regulation was not a problem, there's something else even bigger than that that's holding us back. And that'd be part three of my case the bleak macro environment. Before we get there, I wanna give a quick shout out to our video sponsor, CoinCall. If you're feeling bearish from this video and want to hedge your portfolio, well, one way you can do so is through their Bitcoin or Ether options. Their light mode makes it as easy as trading options on Robinhood, if you've ever done that before. So here I am looking at their December expiry options and I'm choosing puts because I wanna hedge for downside, right? And then I can scroll to the strike price I want and fill out the order form and boom, that's it. 
Anyways, I'm not recommending that you go all YOLO with options, but if you know what you're doing or take the time to learn, then it could be a great way to hedge your portfolio. So go try them out using my link below if you're interested. And also you can get a deposit and trading bonus as shown in this graphic. All right, back to part three of my bear case. Like it or not, you gotta admit that Bitcoin and crypto are treated like risk assets by the broader markets. And that means the macroeconomic environment affects their performance a lot because it directly impacts how risky investors are feeling. But just how is the macro environment looking these days? Well, in a word, bad. If we look at the treasury yield curves, they are screaming that a recession is coming. But even more worrisome is that discretionary spending is down as well. For example, people are spending less money on their pets, like purchasing cheaper types of pet food than before. And that is a huge red flag because we all know how much people love to spoil their pets. But here's the thing, the macro is bad in a sneaky kind of way because it's not bad per the usual metrics that the government cares about. Like the stock market is still holding up decently well, unemployment is quite low, and inflation numbers are down as well. So when the central bankers look at all the data from their ivory tower, they think that things are fine. That's why a lot of them are continuing to jack up interest rates and keep the money printer off, both of which continue to put a damper on risk assets like crypto. But so far we've been taking taking a pretty US or Western centric view of the economy. But there's a whole other side of the world that impacts macro too. You know, the East? Speaking of which, China, the world's second biggest economy, is also in a precarious situation. They've been slumping big time, and the world economy has long relied on China's rocket ship growth to carry the rest of the countries. So China is in the middle of a multi-year slowdown, mostly caused by demographic changes and strained relationships with their trading partners. But more acutely, remember their real estate bubble that all the finance YouTubers were fudding about? Well, it looks like they were right about the what? just not about the when, because they predicted a China bubble pop months ago, but it looks like now is when it's just starting to happen. That big Chinese real estate firm Evergrande just recently filed for bankruptcy, and their shares continue to collapse to never before seen levels. So the big looming question becomes, will that drag down China and hence the rest of the global economy? I mean, I don't know the answer to that, but if it does, you can be sure that the crypto markets will be dragged down as well. Okay, but even if you think that's a little too sensational for you or that it's mostly just FUD, there's still some black swans within the crypto world that could keep us in a bear market. And that leads me to part four of my case, the crypto specific black swans. So this concern mainly centers around Binance. I'm not gonna rehash everything as I've made several videos already analyzing the Binance situation. But just to recap, the first concern is that they may have BNB backed loans just like FTX had FTT backed loans and that their whole operation could collapse if they get liquidated. They still haven't gotten liquidated yet, but I will say if you look at the BNB price action, it really does look unnatural. It's like they're selling other crypto coins to artificially prop up the price of BNB. And here's the thing, with so much regulatory pressure and investigations on them, I don't think they can even do the typical shady stuff to save themselves as they could in the past. So they're really stuck between a rock and a hard place. Speaking of which, they had a rare sealed motion filed against them by the SEC, which experts say that that means they have a sealed DOJ indictment as well that the SEC doesn't want to unveil. Now, that could just be speculation, but it sure does not look good for the biggest exchange in the crypto space. And even if you don't think it'll turn into an FTX-like black swan, you gotta admit that all their top execs leaving in short fashion does not generate a lot of confidence in the future of their exchange. So my whole point here is that if any new black swan happens to Binance, Tether, or whatever other big player in the crypto space, then you can bet that the bear market will continue. Anyways, there you have it. My strongest four part case that the bear market is still here. Honestly, I still lean towards the bear market being over, but I will say that after researching all these points, I'm a lot more uncertain about that than before. What about you though? Are you feeling bearish and want to sell all your coins? Well, if so, you gotta watch this video first so you'll have both sides in mind and then please let me know below which one you agree with more.